Allow me to introduce myself. That's quite unnecessary. I know who you are. Sir Hudson Lowe, His Majesty's Governor. I'm instructed by London to do everything possible to ensure your comfort. Unfortunately, the quarters that I've selected for you are not quite ready. The government has rented this as your temporary residence. I will... I'll have to ask you to abide by certain rules and regulations. First, you're free to move anywhere on the island provided you are accompanied by an English officer. I'm not your prisoner. You held a great deal of power for a very long time. I expect it's not easy to accept someone else in command. Nevertheless, that is the fact of the matter.
picked it up in Jaina when we slaughtered the Prussians. Belonged to Frederick the Great. Not the eagle. He had that stuck on. He's mad for eagles. Had them on the regimental flagstaffs, engraved on the palace crockery, even carved on the chairs. You couldn't sit down without banging your head on a bird. Royal Navy, eh? I'm an army man myself. Sixteen years as a private in the infantry. Meat for the meat grinder. I was with him from the beginning, marching through Italy. No cannon, no cavalry. Behind, sticking out from his britches. Took Sardinia in 11 days. <laughs> He's like a magician. You never know what he'll come up with next. That's what made all them czars and kings and prime ministers shake in their boots every time he farted. Well, he's finished now. I think so. What's all that junk? We're not setting up court here. Do us good to live like peasants for a while. Bread and cheese and wine. A clean, hard life. The way I lived on those first campaigns. Out. Uh, excuse me. The uh, doctor. Out. General Gogo. Count Bertrand. Soldier and diplomat. An iron fist and a clever brain. If you're fond of life, gentlemen, if you value breathing, touching, taste of an apple, scent of a woman, you would better put those talents to work. I told you my idea. Plenty of ships coming and going. It shouldn't be too difficult to get away. It's a thing we can't do alone. We need help. Where do you expect to get it? The Pope considered me despicable. He crossed the Alps to anoint me. The King of Austria called me a Corsican gutter rat and gave me his daughter for a bride. Anyone can make use of a friend. The trick is to use one's enemies. Do I look as though I need a physician? You look healthy enough. I don't believe in doctors. Never met one who wasn't a fool. I'm sure. A fraud and a liar. Very like Greedy. Greedy as any little whore on the boulevard. No doubt. I'd have to be mad to trust myself to someone who's both a doctor and an Englishman. I happen to be Irish. And what precisely is the difference? We're rebels by nature. Splendid. So am I. Furthermore, I'm not the usual Irishman. It's a country that breeds romantics. Whereas you... Believe in reality. Clean and simple. You don't know the first thing about reality. It's seldom clean and it's never simple. You're too young. If I were choosing a doctor, I'd choose a young one. He's had less time to become corrupt. You are the soul of integrity. <laughs> I'm the product of a corrupt society, so I'm corrupt. But at least I would like to see things changed. Where did you go to school? Eton and Cambridge. I thought you weren't English. My father sold out for a government contract and a title. He lives in England. You don't care for him? Not much. What he does is his own business. By the age of 20, every man should be his own father. Is that the way they teach you to stand in the Navy?
One more thing. Apart from my duties as your physician, I'm required to report daily that I've seen you as a precaution against escape. I agreed to obey that order on the condition that I could inform you of it. I'm not a spy. I have nothing against spies. <laughs> for a meal. Give the young gentleman a glass. There's another place. <laughs> they say when you got word I wanted to see you, you thought it was an order. Actually, it's simply a social invitation. You know a number of your family. Mm -hmm. No objection to garlic? I like it. Ah, good boy. How's your illustrious patient? Oh, he seems healthy enough. I haven't had a chance to examine him yet. You'd be amazed at the number of inquiries I get from persons concerned with his welfare. And have got sympathizers everywhere, even in England. Oh, yes, including several peers of the realm. Hope you haven't taken a fancy to him. Oh, I don't go in for heroes. <laughs> he likes campy. Look at these little beauties, fresh out of the water an hour ago. Making a white wine sauce, my speciality. Served with your Uncle Charles in Portugal. Did you? Yes. Both promoted captain the same day. Here am I, Lieutenant Colonel, in his declaration, while he's a Major General sitting behind the desk at the War Office, London. <laughs> Shows what happens when you've got the right connections. As a matter of fact, he wrote to me when he heard you were being shipped out here and told you about my shocking past. Just said you've been in some sort of trouble at medical college, but you can't taste my kidney pie. Meat on this island's not fit for pigs. What kind of trouble? Oh, little meeting against the Chancellor. I was had up on charges of creating a civil disorder. My father, I imagine, used some influence. I was given the choice of prison or a hitch in the Navy. Bit of a firebrand myself when I was young. First year in the army, I was drunk and absent without leave for 16 days. Damn near court-martialed. I'm Irish myself, you know. Oh, yes, born in Galway. What's your standing there for, you tumble-witted mook? <laughs> <laughs> Bring it here while it's hot. It's all ready. <laughs> You'll be spending a great deal of time with our guest. Glad to hear anything you care to pass on. Nothing official, just your impressions. Why not talk to him yourself? <laughs> I was thinking of something a little less formal. I find myself wondering if there's anyone close to him who might be persuaded to be helpful to us. That valet of his, perhaps. Sure, he's a faithful servant, worships his master, etc. Still, there are motives stronger than love. Such as? <laughs> You've a sharp eye and a keen mind. I really would be most grateful for your opinion. Aha! Eat up, eat up. How's this? Delicious. Don't be too eager. For years, it's been 
nothing up there but a skeleton garrison. The governor's had his work cut out, going to get ready. Of what? For the regiments they're sending down. To guard you. country in Europe has an emissary here. All telling the governor they hate your guts. And all dying to meet with you. Did you talk with the Dutchman? Yes. And? He'll take us. When? On his next voyage. No conditions? Pay his price. Any news from France? Riots in Marseille and Lyon. Veterans of the Grand Army marching the streets and yelling your name. What is Paris saying? That you're having an orgy out here. A million francs in gold and three mistresses. <laughs> we'll land in Marseille. Get some sleep. Yes, sir. Where? Egypt, Waterloo, Corsica. Wounded? Yes, sir. How many times? Three, sir. What's the food like in the English army? It's all right. Tell the truth. So it was proper goats from it. What are you doing here? I said, what are Sir, you doing? Finch's nest in the lemon tree. I wanted to look at it. At this hour? It's where I come when I can't sleep. Well, it's our garden. And if Papa says now the governor's rented it to you, I'm not to walk here. Then why do you? I'm nosy. Capital of France. Paris. Italy. Rome. Russia. Petersburg, formerly Moscow. Who burned Moscow? 
I don't know. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Don't lie to me. Yes, you know. I burn Moscow. I thought the Russians burned it to get rid of the French. Have a bonbon. Do you like to gossip? You know Count Bertrand, the grey-haired gentleman? He wears a corset. My mother has a black man she meets in the woods, and she always gives him a shilling. Once she had one all ready to give to him, and I stole it. I like to take things. You were born here. I'm never at home in a place until I've looked at a map of it. Unfortunately, I haven't won. My father has. I'll steal it for you. Thank you. I've just heard you're leaving. I'm toying with the idea. Without us. My husband thinks you haven't a chance. Does he? You're losing your hair. Am I? I hadn't noticed. How old are you now? Forty-six. You look it. Thank you. Oh, there's nothing wrong with growing older. Do you know, I looked at myself in the mirror this morning. I really stared. Forced myself to see every little line. The little sag under the chin. And then I looked into my eyes. Do you know, I really hadn't liked them up until now, but I think experience has made them quite interesting. Enjoying yourself? If only you knew the sheer pleasure of standing here and feeling absolutely nothing. What I'd give to be 17 again and feel the way I do now. It really is delicious. After you married me off to Bertrand, I used to watch you at the opera with your latest girl and play the game of guessing what she wanted from you. Yes? There were the ones who wanted a diamond necklace or a new carriage. Some who were curious. For some who merely wanted excitement. Never love. I think we all understood that was the one thing you were never prepared to offer. It takes time to love. I never had the time. When I knew it was over between us, I lay there, writhing in pain as though my stomach had been slashed, biting my wrist to stop myself from screaming. Then I picked up the pieces and carried on with the life that you so thoughtfully had arranged for me. Bertrand comes from a fine old family. He's civilized, rich... And I can't bear his mouth or the smell of his skin. It's dry and musty like an attic that's been shut up for years. Find someone else. Thank you. I've had all I wanted, the pleasures of passion. You know, I prefer feeling nothing. The sweet satisfaction of standing here and feeling absolutely delicious.
I was just remembering. Hmm? One of those boring dinners at Versailles. Hmm? The reception for the King of Denmark. <laughs> that place. And those little pouches. You look like a squirrel. <laughs> With false teeth, it didn't fit. <laughs> With your permission, I would like to discuss the input tax on herrings. <laughs> You were wearing blue. Okay. <laughs> I used to bring my son to the beach when he was small. He used to squat like an Arab, piling up little heaps of sand. Not bridges or castles or forts. Those funny little heaps of sand. My wife doesn't answer my letters. They tell me she changed my son's name. And has forbidden him to mention me. He had the most beautiful little bottom. another baby. Repairs have been completed on your permanent residence. Mm. I'd be obliged if you'd prepare to move as soon as possible. Of course. I made the point that neither you nor any of your people has ride around the island unescorted. Did you? Oh, yes. General gogo has been seen in the town alone. Also on the beach. He collects seashells. I pride myself on being a civilized man. I'd be most unhappy to have to surround you with a squadron of guards. I'll see he takes up another hobby. I'm quite willing to let you move around unaccompanied, provided you keep to the vicinity of the house, say a five-mile radius. That's very kind of you. I'm curious as to how you plan to spend your time. Oh, sleeping, reading, watching the birds. Is there any way I could be of service? Send you some books, perhaps. Thank you. I'd like a Bible. <laughs> it never occurred to me that you were religious. Oh, I only read the love poetry and the battle scenes. You can learn a lot from those Old Testament boys. Good day.
Who is it that beats you? Hmm? Your mother? Of all the human emotions, the most ridiculous is self-pity. Wipe your nose. I was younger than you. I was only ten years old when they first sent me away from home to school in France. Queer little runt of a foreigner. Poor, shy, lonely, rebellious. Perfect target for beatings. The first oath I swore was never again to allow myself to be humiliated. You have odd eyes. I never trust people unless they have something odd about them. This place where I'm to live when they move me out of the cottage. Longwood. Is it far? Come, show me. been inside. It's full of rats. When did you first notice this dizziness? Last few days. And the pain is? In my head, chest, legs, it travels. Yes. I see. Follow my finger, please. You were assigned to attend me? No. I volunteered. Why? Curious. About the kind of man who could fight war after war and never stop. To count the cost. I believe in myself. Open your shirt, please. Power is my art. I love it. The way a musician loves his instrument. Deep breath. Thank you. I prefer power in the hands of the people. Don't be an idiot. The people haven't the faintest idea how to govern themselves. Lie down, please. Neither do most of those in power. I know, believe me. My yeah. father is an advisor to the Foreign Office. My mother is the daughter of an ambassador. I was born in the guts of the monster. You should take special care of me, O'Mara. You should treasure me. At least you've got something to rebel against. You might try doing without alcohol and tobacco for a while. Every day, power gets more faceless. Won't be long before the world is run by machines. A million anonymous, efficient, miserable little clerks like Sir Hudson Lowe deciding matters of life and death by filling out forms in triplicate. What do you do then, eh? You can't have a revolution against cogwheels. What do you think of Madame Bertrand? Does she attract you? You like to test people, don't you? The only way to tell if a bell is cracked is to strike it. So your illustrious patient claims he's sick? Yes, sir. He's pretending. Hmm, probably. Still, to be on the safe side, I'd just as soon not have him move to that pink pen. It's hard enough dealing with a living legend, but ten times worse dealing with a dead one. I want him moved. London keeps telling the world he's being treated with the utmost care. All fancy speeches aside, 
I am his jailer. I won't be moved. For his safekeeping, I think go ahead and move it. I think it's time we got one thing clear, my boy. You come shambling in here, rude, arrogant, and disgrace to your uniform. So far, I've had the patience of a saint. Don't think it's because of your connections, your uncles and cousins who think they run the world. All my life, I've had to watch the privilege climb over me, the promotions and the honors and the juicy posts falling into their laps like golden apples. Now it's my turn. And now, nothing and no one is going to stand in my way. I'll be the most tolerant of men, my lad. So long as you cooperate. You were weak to sign your permission to move in. I came to visit. I'm busy. Now wait. do that. That's a filthy habit. Give it back. I said give it back. Undying. Undying what? Love. What was she like? Josephine? Expensive. When she married me, she thought I was rich. And I thought she was. And you think about her. What is it you remember? she had of carrying herself as though she was a gift. What is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Are you all right? When I'm back in Paris, you'll come and see me. You'll be a woman then. A cold beauty in a yellow gown like a blaze of sunlight. Coming across the great hall, up the scarlet steps. Here, you can sit on the Queen's throne. She won't be in court today. Her dog is sick. Disgusting beast, I hope he croaks. Well, now you're here, the least I can do is find you a husband. Cast your eyes over this glittering assemblage and let me know if anyone strikes your fancy. Uh -uh. The Italian attaché, pompous ass, takes a bath with all his medals on. Now, if you want to make a brilliant match, take him. And the soup stains on his waistcoat. Looks like a corpse. And he owns half the vineyards in Burgundy. You'll end up a rich widow with every wolf in Paris howling at your door. Counts, princes, dukes, envoys out, a lot of you out. Do 
you like yourself. Yeah. Be what you are. Reach for what you want. Don't let them make you careful. Is it true? In Syria, poisoned your own wounded. What right have you to say I murdered my men in Syria? Because it's the truth. You're bringing charges. Splendid. Fact. At the Battle of Acre, we were starving, eating our camels and horses. Fact. When I had to retreat, I had barely the ships to move those who could still walk. Fact. The Turks have a charming way of mutilating prisoners. What was I to do? Leave my wounded to be tortured? It was an act of mercy. It was an act of murder. You think there's always a choice between good and evil? Sometimes there's only a choice between horrors. I made Paris the center of culture. Stole the statues of Vienna. Plundered the paintings of Venice. Ripped the bronze horses off St. Mark's Cathedral. I was the founder of modern law. While your secret police censored the mail, suppressed the news, jailed the opposition. I opened the schools to the children of the poor and drafted them into the army. France was perishing when I came to power, a country in chaos. I made her the greatest nation on earth. And destroyed two million of her sons. Left 9,000 dead at Austerlitz, 400,000 in Germany, half a million in Russia. You're not a stupid boy, Omara, so it must be innocence. Your whole career stinks of death. Every head of state is forced to commit acts which for an ordinary man would be crimes. You can't judge me the way a justice of the peace judges a peasant who steals a pig. When you judge me, you judge a people. The farmers who fed my troops, the mechanics who made my guns, the men who flocked to my flag. Tell me, were you eager to fight or were you forced? Oh, I couldn't wait to get into uniform. Was it out of love you followed me or fear? Oh, love. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. He won't be able to keep the usual appointment. He's closed up in his room, working. Uh, I have to report that I've seen him. Of course. I've finally worked out my strategy with you. How to act with you. Polite, but disinterested. Now, I, I know a woman in London. She's very beautiful. She's married to a very important man. Rich, dynamic. And would you believe it? She took as her lover, uh, callow and a particularly attractive young man. And it baffled me. And I finally asked her why. What does he have for you? And what did she answer? Time. Shall we ride today? Yes, if you like. You understand I don't give a damn whether we do or not. I understand.
I'm afraid he's busy. He'll be busy all day. There's no point in waiting. I don't mind. Do your parents know you come here? Is that how they dress in Paris? It was when I left. I don't know what they're wearing now. Does he lie a lot? No do. I just wondered if he was like the rest. Do you think deception is confined to men? With women, I take it for granted. Have you known him long? Since I was your age. What were you like then? Innocent. That was before it went out of fashion. What was he like? When you're alone with him, what do you talk about? Hmm? You're a lovely child. You should wash your face more often.
evening. Contemplating a sea journey. Cartwright. Yes, sir. He the one that killed Watkins? Yes, sir. It wasn't both of them? No, sir. We were hanging. You were genius for evading the gallows. Sergeant! You're going to Longwood now, at once. You insist on treating me as a prisoner. I'm not a criminal and I'm not a captive. My orders are to move you to Longwood. I intend to do so tonight. By force, if necessary. Do you think England defeated me? I failed because of the sea, the fire of Moscow, the ice of winter, the elements, and only the elements! Twice every 24 hours, a British officer will verify your presence by direct contact, entering your quarters, if necessary. Sergeant! I have no intention of exhibiting myself as a freak! If anyone tries to force his way into my quarters, he will enter over my dead body! I bother you, don't I? I make you realize how small you are, a dwarf, a pygmy, a pimple on the ass of authority, an insignificant bigot to the soul of a loving Do you know, there's an island off the coast of China where war is unknown. What do you mean? There is an island off the coast of China where war is unknown. Never heard of it. Don't even have weapons. They must have something. Clubs, spears. Nope. Those and arrows. No. In the desert once, I dined with a tribe of Arab nomads. Shape was enormous. Must have weighed 300 pounds. For lunch, they served a whole sheep. The chief delicacy was the eyeballs. Tastes like rotten eggs. on your hair differently. It's a wig. Exactly like rotten eggs. A handsome guy. Thank you. There was another I wanted to wear, but the rats got to it first. What is this? Vegetable stew. Where is the roast? It was full of maggots. I'll talk to Lowe about it. Tell him there was maggots in the flour as well. Play stinks of dung. I smell worse. Do you play billiards? Mm -hmm. Good at the game? Not very. Right, then we'll play for stakes.
How long have you had it? I have what? The pain. What pain? Is that the sound of a bell? Someone came into my head just then like the ringing of a bell. I'll be hearing voices next, like Joan of Arc. I miss the sound of bells. My first memories are of the bells that rang in the villages round our home. All those early dreams. each other. It's a simple thing. Why make it complicated? Be grateful for anything that gives you pleasure. You. Not good. I had the impression you enjoyed it. It's Mickey Grimm! Christ, what is it you want? I knew you were trying to escape. I prayed you'd fail. Did you? I beg, dear God, let him know what it's like to feel the earth give way under his feet. To flounder and to stumble. And to go down in the slime. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> your greatest talent, isn't it? If Amara is still here. Get Amara! as damp as a dungeon. The walls are covered with mold. I'll have a cart of firewood sent up. The water isn't fit to drink. We'll have a new well dug. Meantime, I'll see he has sufficient wine, et cetera. Got all the medicines you need? All of a sudden, you seem anxious to keep him healthy. He's a very important personage. <laughs> You're looking stuffier than ever. Why don't you let Belfridge cut your hair? Trust your feeling fit. Quite. Thank you. Not easy out here. Same thing as regular exercise. I ride 10 miles every day. 
I am instructed to relay the news that a warship is on its way to take your general and yourself to England to stand trial. Trial? For crimes against humanity. Chiefly, it would appear, the wanton murder of civilian populations, the torture of prisoners of war, etc. You'll find the details in the indictment. War is war. Yes, well, that should make preparing your defense quite simple. Item, May the 3rd, 1808. Mass execution of men, women, and children at Puerto Sol, Spain. Item, they committed sabotage. I ordered reprisals. As deputy governor, it was my duty. What? When a respectable man does something despicable, does he always insist it's his duty? I ordered punishment. I didn't specify the form. I knew nothing about any massacre. I was an administrator. Yes, well, I'm sure the court will be most attentive. Good day, sir. What the hell do you think you're doing? Hmm? You know visitors are forbidden. You could have had your head blown off. I don't care. You'll end up with pneumonia. Get that thing off. Now you're here, how do you propose to get out? I don't know. I'll call the guards and have them escort you home. So this is where you sleep. Get up. I brought you a peach from Mount God. Never really look at me. I'm not a child. So you're a woman, eh? Come to comfort the lonely emperor, eh? And you brainless little idiot. Keep mistaking compassion for love and you'll end up marrying a drunkard, hmm? Now listen. I'll tell you something and learn it. Burn it into that childish brain of yours. There are only two kinds of men in this world. Those who will use you. Yeah? And those you can use. Stick to the ones you can. France. That's right, sir. Stationed just outside Boulevard for about seven months until we were posted here. You say arrangements were made for you to convey certain information. That's right, sir. You see, my wife's French. It was her brother that brought around this gentleman from Paris. You're lying. The 
the gentleman from Paris asked me to show you this, sir. Well, excuse me. The salt air, terribly sensitive. Just my luck to wind up in a place like this. Well, now then, let's see. The, the, the first thing he, he said was, the country's on the brink of a revolution. Them's his exact words. People rioting against the king. Slipping handbills onto the doors. Putting up posters and all. A week before we left, the Duke of something or other was assassinated in the street. And in the last six months, uh, over a thousand people have been arrested for treason. That's all for gentleman from Paris said I'd be properly gratified for all my trouble. There were one or two other things I had to tell you, but I can't quite remember. You see, I have to keep it all in my head. Don't carry any, any, any special papers. Too risky. Lord Cecil being aboard and all those special guards. Who did you say? Lord Cecil. Here on this island? Yes, sir. Thank you. That way. Cecil. Why is Cecil? Why is he here? Welcome, sir. All right, all right. Let's get it over with. Permit me to apologize for not being able to arrange a proper reception. With a little pest hole worse than Africa. Been down to the dock to meet you if I had any idea our warship was bringing us such an illustrious personage. No advance word at all from London. Typical. Imbeciles at the Foreign Office. A miracle they managed to wipe their own asses. Well, I say that although this is the first time I've had the honor of meeting you in person, I've long regarded you with the utmost admiration. Well aware that you make a point of keeping out of the public eye, and that many of our countrymen are unaware of the historic services which you have rendered Do to... Do you always talk so much? Or is it a disease one catches out here? Thank you. 
Go on, go on. I'll tell you when to stop. Sir, the officers would like to give a ball in your honor. I mean, decent looking women. I guess they will be able to round up a few. Don't care for social occasions. No pretty women, I'd fall asleep. Oh, not much out here in the way of worldly pleasures, I'm afraid. Still, I think I can promise you a passable dinner this evening, cooking something of a hobby of mine. We're having lobster with mushrooms and almonds. My own recipe. I served it once to the Duke of Hartford. He said it was exquisite. I haven't touched anything except toast and boiled eggs. Haven't tasted fish or meat since I was 60. Bad for the bowels. Ah, Thomas. Yes. Saw your father before I left. Ask me to inquire how you were getting on. Tell him I'm working on a plot to set fire to Parliament. <laughs> I'll tell him. <laughs> Never liked your father. Puritanical bastard. Stupid as a flat iron. About this patient of yours. Heard he'd been having an attack of some sort. Yes. I don't know what. Well, give me a written report on it. Specifically, I want to know if he's in good enough health to conduct a fair state. But I thought nine-tenths of the disasters in this world, my dear sir, occur because men like you start thinking. <laughs> Set fire to Parliament. <laughs> That's it. Incinerate the bastards. <laughs> Splendid! I'd be highly delighted if you'd do me the favor of getting dressed. The person I brought with me is most distinguished, and I find it most inappropriate that... Why don't you go and inspect the kitchen? Like to keep your quarters dark, eh? Agree with you. Hate bright lights. I was told by Talleyrand that you once had four women in one night. Yes. <laughs> Extraordinary. Amusing. Most amusing. <laughs> I expect you know you're a damn nuisance. We've had to bring in three extra regiments for guard duty. How much is it costing you? 320,000 pounds a year. Annoys the Queen. Oh, she doesn't say so. <laughs> Royalty never haggles over money. Only dreams about it. Oh, you seem to be in excellent condition. I exercise an hour a day, eat like a pig, sleep like a child. Heard you've been ill. Bit of fatigue. The price one pays for having an insatiable mistress. <laughs> now, I gather you're having your troubles with the French. Occupying a country isn't a popularity contest. And the sharks are gathering, eh? Austria, Saxony, Russia. With their greedy eyes on Paris. Sniffing, circling, waiting to close in for the kill. How will you stop them? With troops, if necessary. Oh, but that's so expensive. What a pity you can't find some iron-fisted soldier to put down the riots and rally the people. Hmm? <laughs> like me in the old days. Happily, I've lost the appetite for power. Dreary business. All that sly maneuvering. Thank God I've done with it. About this trial. Oh, yes. You've a right to counsel. Sir John Meacham has indicated his willingness to conduct your defense. Cousin of mine, <laughs> former Lord Chancellor, pleasant chap, bit senile. Hardly matters, seeing the outcome's a foregone conclusion. Quite so. Can't afford to have you let loose in Europe again. Makes people nervous, you know, bad for trade. <laughs> no, we've considered the alternatives, and hanging you is by far the most sensible solution. We all have to die sometime, whether in bed or on the gallows, is a minor detail. Bravo. 
Uh, the moment the international situation quiets down, we ship your remains to Paris for a proper funeral. <laughs> Generous of you. All right. What's the price? Ah. You didn't come here to discuss my trial. You came to offer me something. I know what it is and I want it. What's the price? We allow you to escape and get back to France. And then? You suppress the revolutionary element, establish law and order. And? Within six months of taking power, you declare war on Prussia. You're a cunning bastard. Precisely what my dear mother used to say. What support can I count on? None. We adopt a most aggressive attitude, threaten to send troops, etc., etc. What about Russia? Oh, she'll make indignant noises. Who gets Austria? Nobody. You stop at the border. I want Vienna. Out of the question. Then you're wasting your time. They'll give you Saxony. I want Vienna. Impossible. Then find somebody else to shovel your manure. Prime Minister wasn't too happy about my coming. Yes, he's afraid of you. Not as much as he's afraid of revolution. It's a disease that's likely to be catching. We can still forget all this and bring you to trial. Under what law? Come now, you know perfectly well that law is an instrument like anything else. You manufacture what you need. I take the risks and you reap the reward. It's a stinking bargain. You're in no position to make a better one. Either you accept our terms or you hang. <laughs> It's what's referred to in the law books as blackmail, and in the history books as statesmanship. And hang me and be damned. That's the spirit. Enjoy our little chat. How do I buy guns and ammunition, pay my troops? The usual way, levy taxes. Six months isn't enough. You'll be happy to suggest certain banks in Switzerland that can be approached for loans. I was fond of Paris. Impressed by that new museum of yours, the uh, the uh, the Louvre, uh, particularly the religious paintings. I'm informed it may well be the one place left in Paris where one can still find a virgin. So uh, what's that? Intelligence reports from the war office. Over there, on the table. By the wall. You've been taking your medicine. Oh, hiya! Yes, that's it. Go and sit down somewhere. You're in the way. Cipriani, give me a hand. I should take it easy if I were you. You're a sick man. Sickness is a state of mind. All the same, I keep taking the medicine. This illness of yours, it's painful and a little frightening. But as long as I give you the proper treatment, it'll pass. As for this business of accusing me of murder... War is an art, Omara. Beautiful and disciplined. Like music or pure mathematics. But sentimentality only cheapens it. When I go into battle, I never trouble to take food for all my troops. It stands to reason some of them will be killed. Why well, go to the bother of hauling provisions for corpses? Excuse me, you're an interesting young man and I enjoy you. But I have other things on my mind. <laughs> it was quite touching. He put his arm around me. I'm sending you back to England with Lord Cecil. Work out the details of my return. Dear, loyal Henri, you're the only one I can trust. And you believe him? I enjoyed the performance. If the theatre had a few actors half as good, I'd attend more often. 
What about these? I don't want them. But they're perfectly good. I don't want them. You don't look well. I must get some new uniforms made in London. They have excellent tailors there. Must you do that? It is absolutely disgusting. When my father died at the age of 93, he still had a beautiful head of hair. Yes, so you told me. This was his secret. Stop it! Was it Pleasant Ball? Marvellous! Possible orchestra? Marvellous! Your vocabulary is breathtaking. The office waiting for me. To arm. Tall, slim, only 24. He's a captain. At 24, I was a general. He writes poetry. I wrote a whole code of law. Jealous. I came to say goodbye. I, I heard you. Papa sending me to school in London. God, how I longed for it. Begged him. He wouldn't hear of it. How did you manage? I found a man I could use. I told him I was in love with you. Come wait, Pat. No. Goodbye. I despise goodbyes. Go on, your young man will be getting impatient. He'll wait. You're learning. I had a first-rate teacher. Yes, brilliant. I know he taught me how to be unhappy, how to hate. From time to time, he needs to prove to himself that he's warm and generous. So for a bit, sweet love, he was kind to me. It relieved his boredom and cost him nothing. Run along. The children's hour is over. last few days, food tastes delicious. When I wake in the morning, everything is sharp and clear, startlingly clear, in the way it is before a battle. How does it feel? And London's a fascinating city, they tell me. You lost, didn't you? They made you take their terms. How does it feel to be used? Once I'm back, I'll do as I like. I don't think so. We'll see. What I'd have given to have been there. A toothless, palsied old man calls the tune and you dance to it. How does it feel to be a whore? You should do something with your life. Take up charity work. Have a baby, you're not too old. Damn you. 
I'm sure he already has. day. Hmm. And you're leaving. Hmm. I'm pleased for you. And a little sad. But it never happened between us. If I'd said yes, you wouldn't have known what to do with me. <sighs> Is it painful losing him? I never had him. Did you think you would? No. But you let him seduce you. Yes, I know. At my age, it's indecent. Oh, I had a need and he sensed it. He has a great genius for that. The way he sensed your need for a father to carry on your little game of rebellion. He was quite happy to fill the role. It got him what he wanted. Which was? To be made well enough to go back. All those pretty speeches of yours about hating war. Do you really think of yourself as someone who wants to change the world? You had your one moment of rebellion and what have you done since? Talk. You talk and he acts. In my life's practice to avoid the customer is skip the rubbish and get me to my ship. Don't poke my nose out of door without you lining up those damned regiments of tin soldiers. Oh, there you are. Fellow's got a passion for ceremony. <laughs> I expected something sexual. All right, all right, do as you please. Hello, uh, sir. <clears throat> no taking man. Think he'll end up in the House of Lords. Serve him right. Have you read my report? I've seen your fellow. Looks as sound as an ox. I can assure you he's not. Well, sound enough for our purposes. <laughs> Even if his physical condition were perfect, he'd still be sick. There's no term for it in the medical books, but it's contagious nevertheless. His appetite for spilling blood. Oh, that. Nine tenths of the world suffers from that. All I can try for is to see that the blood isn't English. Spoken like a true statesman. If I'd been born a woman, I'd have made a damn good haul. No easy accomplishment, I can tell you. I suppose you wouldn't care for a job in the naval ministry. I have no particular desire to work at preserving the empire. Quite right. Go back to your civilian life. And spend your time comforting your lady patients and pinching the bottoms of their chambermaids. Different from me at my age. The Empire is the only lady I can still satisfy.
came to say goodbye. Very kind of you. Farewell present. Thank you. You used to belong to Frederick the Great. But you treasure it. Token of our little dueling match. Nothing I enjoy more. It's not often I find an opponent nasty enough to make it interesting. My feelings precisely. Bon voyage. gentlemen will be staying. Carry on as before.